hello friends and metrics uh, welcome to another video uh, I've had my sleep woke up uh, pretty ready now to carry on from where we stopped a few hours ago um, we have a continuation of our supplementary exam papers for 2022 May June exams we're doing chemistry for grade 12s all right um, Again, I want to express my gratitude for the work you guys have done in assisting uh, me to really spread these videos uh, as much as possible, at least so that they can reach as many folks as possible, so that they too can have something to, to look at and use as, you know, some point of comparisons, you know, in solving these physical science questions. Sometimes they can be challenging, sometimes uh, they're not that challenging, so it's a bit of a dynamic situation. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, question 5 says, uh, Lenos used the reaction of magnesium carbonate solid with excess dilute um, hydrochloric acid. The good thing is once this is excess it means this reaction is going to be limited by this reagent which is the magnesium carbonate. Okay, to investigate the relationship between temperature and the rate of a chemical reaction. Alright, so we are given a balanced equation which makes our lives very easy because once we are given this what we can tell here once we are told this is excess, we know that this is what determines the amount that we get, okay, of be it magnesium chloride or carbon dioxide gas or water. If ever we have to think about the product as in the maximum amount or the yield, we will have to compare it with the number of moles of the magnesium because this is what gets used up completely while this one will remain behind. Now the results obtained are represented in the graph below. Okay. Now it says the graph of average rate of production of carbon dioxide gas. So basically this is our reference uh, product uh, which is in grams per minute. Again, pay attention to the units used for that reaction rate versus temperature. And then we can see on this graph that look, if you're reading here, this is the rate of reaction, the side in grams per minute, and then we have the temperature. So we can tell that at 10, the rate was that low, below 0 0.1. But at 20, it was above 0 0.1, but below 0 0.2. At 30, it was above 0 0.2, but below 0 0.3. At 40, it's exactly at 0 0.5. So we can tell that when the temperature increases, and so does the reaction rate, okay? not a problem. So question one says define the term reaction rate. Okay so these are very simple questions. First they will always give you some good question to to work with. So we're doing question five here. Uh, let's just write this one MgCO3 and it's solid plus two moles of HCl, which is in solution, okay, goes forward to give us magnesium chloride salt, which is in solution, plus carbon dioxide gas, right, as it says, it's gaseous, plus a molecule of water, don't know what happened to the H2O. It says it's a liquid. Okay. Not a problem. So we have that nice equation. So I'm just writing it so that we can work with it if we need to. So 5.1. So we know that the reaction rate is defined as a change in the amount or you can say concentrations, amount or concentrations of products 
or reactants react reactants per unit time so don't pay too much attention to the writing I mean my writing is ever horrible so the, the, the key word here is the change in the amount of either the products or the reactants per unit time so we observe this over time okay so easy definitions that you don't need to lose marks for please make sure you just take them and run with them okay the next one says uh, state two conditions that must be kept constant during this investigation remember there can be other issues here say for example we used this one as a solid but they didn't tell us whether we used um, a chip or we used um, granules or we used whatever powder so they didn't tell us exactly the state in which this was but we know that the state in which it is needs to be maintained because if we end up using let's say remember when investigating these um, you want to also see because probably you're going to be using these maybe more than once okay so you want to make to make sure that the state in which the magnesium carbonate is used is the same as in the mass you want to use the same mass and make sure that also the particle size is the same when you say particle size we just mean if you used granules keep it as granules or if you used a chip keep it as a chip or powder keep it as powder but don't interchange because that can affect the, the rate of reaction as well two what you want to keep constant is the concentration of the hydro hydrochloric acid okay because a higher concentration will actually cause the reaction to be much faster and therefore you want to keep this constant and what else can we keep constant here is the volume we don't want to be changing the volumes here so we want to keep the volume of this HCl as well constant all right because once we change it and make it smaller then it can, it's going to get used up much faster and therefore we're going to have a problem in determining our extent of our reaction, okay? So you have a few things to consider here. Yeah, this is 5.2, not 0.1, okay? So we can just say what we want to keep constant here is the, uh, I don't know, mass or amount, let's just say amount of uh, MgCO3 okay and particle size or you can just say phase whatever you want to say and then we also want to keep constant uh, the concentration and volume of HCl okay so you can either choose concentration or volume or you write both like this it doesn't really matter in volume this is volume okay of the HCl so these are the things that you don't want to interfere with your, re your reaction all you want is just uh, the effect of um, temperature okay I don't know about pressure maybe but if we keep the volume the same essentially the pressure okay and maybe the pressure may change depending on the amount of carbon dioxide gas we're getting but uh, let's not go there okay they said two we don't want to complicate our lives just want to keep it simple because time is money baba money is a word of evil <laughs> but it answers pretty much a lot of things that we want so use the collision theory to explain the relationship shown in the graph as we said the more the temperature increases the more the reaction rate also increases so they want us to use the collision theory so what we know is that um, as the temperature increases i'm just going to use that arrow as the temp this is temp yeah ne? okay let me start properly and try to relax as the temperature increases and so does the average kinetic energy 
of the reactant particles. Uh, this leads to more effective collisions of reactant molecules or particles resulting to the increase of the reaction rate. Okay, I just use an R again. I'm tired of writing. So basically here, using the collision theory, it talks about the direct proportionality of the temperature increase and the net increase in the reaction rate because of the increase in the average kinetic energy of the reactant particles leading them to having effective collisions. In fact, we can say more regular effective collisions, more regular. Because these need to be more regular, not infrequent, because just effective is not enough. They need to be regular so that the reaction rate increases, okay? Again, this is something that is essentially in your books, so you don't want to lose marks here. Of course, saying that there's going to be an increase um, in the average kinetic energy of the reactant molecules, regular and effective collisions, and then incrementing the reaction rate. That associated with uh, the temperature increase. Uh, you've got your four marks, I think. So it's all about getting the keywords, okay? Not a problem. So 5.4, what do they want? So 5.4 says, um, the learners obtained the graph above using 5 grams. See, now they're telling us the amount. Uh, 5 grams of magnesium carbonate with excess hydrochloric acid at 40 degrees. So they're exactly telling us where we are focusing in our graph. So we can see that if we read where 40 degrees goes into the graph, all you need to do is just to be able to know how to interpret your graphs. So if you follow this, when it gets to the graph, when you read it across, the reaction rate reads exactly 0 0.5. All right. So we know that 40 degrees takes us to 0 0.5 in terms of the reaction rate. All right, so let's see what is the story about this one. It says, now calculate uh, the time taken for the reaction to run to completion. Six marks. So you can see here you're going to have a bit of work. All right. Um, start here. 5.4.1. Basically, we remember from our given equation that MgCO3 plus 2HCl gave us MgCl2 plus uh, CO2 plus H2O. So what we can tell here, all we want, because this is our reference uh, product that will give us an idea of the reaction rate. So the first thing we want to do is to know that we started here with the mass of 5 grams. So what would be the number of moles? It's going to be mass over molar mass, okay? Which is going to be 5 over, let's see what's the molar mass of magnesium um, Alright, so let's just have a look at our periodic table there. It's only annoying part is this back and forth. Maybe I should have given myself a, a periodic table elsewhere. Ah, but sometimes you see when you don't really have time on your hands, this is what happens. So the magnesium is just one. So magnesium is 24 plus. The chlorine is 35.5 and there's two of them. So sorry carbonate what am i saying goodness so the magnesium carbonate not chloride so carbon is 12 so we're going to add 12 there plus 
the oxygens there are 3 so 16 times 3 is 42 48 sorry 48 um, so this gives us 84 so magnesium carbonate has a molar mass of 84 hope I've done this one correctly it's MgCO3 eh? um, 16 by 3 just be sure yeah, it's 48 and then we add the 12 of the carbon plus the 24 so it's 84 so another problem uh, so this is going to be over 84 okay and then what is that number of moles that we're going to get there so we're simply going to say 5 divided by 84 uh, it gives us whoa Ah, doch. Okay, we're going to try and keep it simple. So we're going to get 0, comma, 0. Um, let's say 5, 9, 5. Let's keep it to 4 so that we don't round off too soon. 9, 5 moles. Okay. So we know that, okay, once we have this number of moles, what does it help us with? We know that 1 mole of magnesium carbonate will give us one mole of carbon dioxide because that uh, situation is uh, sort of balanced so now we want to know we can just say one mole MgCO3 yields one mole of CO2 therefore we know that 0, 0,0595 moles uh, of MgCO3 will give us exactly the same 0, 0,0595 moles of CO2 gas. Okay, So now we know that when this reaction is over, there's going to be this number of moles of our carbon dioxide gas because they said at the completion of the reaction okay so from this because this reaction rate is represented in terms of um, grams per minute so we have to think about uh, the situation that says how many minutes did it take and now we need to represent this in grams we can say therefore the mass of CO2 is going to be what number of moles multiplied by the molar mass of carbon dioxide of course I'm already taking it easy you know that um, your formula says number of moles is mass over molar mass so when you cross multiply the molar mass it gives you the mass okay so let's see the number of moles is going to be what we just calculated 0, 0,0595 multiplied by what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? Again, oxygen is double, so it's 16 by 2, which is 32. And then we add carbon, which is 12, so it's 44, okay? 44. Let me just confirm this. Sometimes eh, there's no room for errors in these kinds of questions because you need to really keep everything in check. So you don't want to make errors. I was just confirming my carbon. Sometimes it's easy to make that error. So we're going to say the smaller mass of carbon dioxide here is going to be 44 grams per mole. So what do we have? Uh, this is 44 multiplied by 0, 0,0595. And what we get here is 2,618. So we get 2,618 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, we need this. We need this because now we can say, all right, now that we know the mass of carbon dioxide we produced, we want to know how long did we take to produce this mass from that magnesium carbonate. Okay, assuming that the temperature was constant because here, if we're talking about the changing temperature, it's going to hurt, okay? So that is uh, essentially the story because we can't really start off elsewhere, but we just zoomed in in here. 
So what are we going to do? We can say, okay, the reaction rate at 40 degrees, okay? Celsius is given as 0 0,5, okay, on the graph, all right? All right, see the graph. That is what we established, okay? What does this imply? What is the reaction rate? It is the mass of carbon dioxide over the change in time. All right, which is going to be equal to 0 0,5, right? Which we can say simply over 1. Remember, this is a ratio, so it doesn't have units, so don't make a mistake. Okay, maybe it does. Yeah, it does have units. It's that one over that. But at this point in time, you just write it as it is. Otherwise, you're going to kill yourself. So what do we do here? What do we want? We want the time taken. So if we cross multiply here, all right, this follows that delta T is going to be the mass of carbon dioxide over 0 0,5, which is the reaction rate right because that will, will multiply there and that there when we make this the subject of the formula this is what we end up with what did we find it was 2 comma 618 divided by 0 comma 5 then it will tell us how much time we used to produce this thing 2 comma uh, 618 divided by 0 comma 5 um, it says we had 5 comma 24 to two decimal places this time 5 comma 24 minutes because this was per minute okay so that is the answer okay so you see it's a little bit of work um, but if you understand what this is doing, then you can actually make out what you need to be doing. So, very nice question. I mean, I think it's fun. I've never seen it asked like this. So, it's a bit of a good challenge to someone who loves these kinds of things. But a very bad idea to someone who's scared of these things. So, the idea is get used to this. Let's just confirm if our reaction rate is going to be the same. We said the mass is 2,1, sorry, 2,618 divided by the minutes here is 5,24. Uh, and we get exactly something very close because to two decimal places this gives us uh, 0, 0,5 essentially. So I think um, there is no mistake here for now. <laughs> So where do you get this six marks? Of course, getting the number of moles of your rate limiting reagent because that is key. That's what you need. What is in excess doesn't help you much unless you can know how much remained after it was used if there's no intel on this one. If you know what you started with and what you ended up with, then you can use what was used up as an indication, okay? All right, um, we go on and say, okay, it helped us to cross over to finding the number of moles of uh, carbon dioxide gas and determining the mass is key. And then, of course, substituting into this. Uh, but maybe the substitution is much better there than maybe the answer here. How many marks are here? One, two, three, four, five. Where can I give you the sixth mark? Maybe that correct substitution over here. It's not really too difficult, but you just need to maintain focus. All right, um, let's move on before we chow time. A very sensitive issue, okay? Uh, we're doing 5.4.2. It says now the molar gas volume at 40. That means what is the volume per mole of this gas? If 1,5 decimeter cubed of carbon dioxide 
is collected in a syringe. So we know first of all that, hold on, the number of moles of CO2 is going to be the volume of CO2 over the molar volume of CO2. So that is the formula we know. Okay. Of course, if we're talking about STP, you would know that this is going to be uh, 22,5 decimeter cubed, comma four decimeter cubed, right? So, but now we want this at this particular temperature. But this is basically the volume occupied by a single molecule of carbon dioxide. All right. So we know the number of moles. We calculated it above. So what was the answer there? Uh, so the answer, we calculated the number of moles of carbon dioxide. So you see we just steal what we did. So it helps us to simplify our work. So we knew that for this mass of carbon dioxide that we got, there was this number of moles of carbon dioxide. So this is easy. So it implies that the molar volume at this temperature is going to be, remember when you say this one is over 1, you cross multiply there, this multiplies there, but because you want this as the subject of the formula, you'll then have to divide by this throughout. So it's going to be volume divided by the number of moles. All right, so the volume that they gave us is 1,5 decimeter cubed divided by the number of moles. Uh, the number of moles here we found out to be 0, 0,595 to try and run away from rounding off too soon. Um, okay, so let's see. 1,5 divided by 0, 0,0595. Mm. So I'm getting 25, comma, one huh I am not quite happy here eh? 25 it doesn't make sense does it anyway what am I doing here Hmm? Okay, yeah, and I ask you number of it because this is big. Because I mean, this is essentially dm cubed per mole. Okay, we can say mole to the minus one. So let me see what is the molar vo gas volume? What do they say? Yeah, it's the, it's twenty two comma five. Uh, wait a minute, what am I saying? Yeah, it's twenty two. Remember, at STP, this is twenty five. So it is um, twenty two comma four decimeter cubed per mole. So this is correct. And this one now is saying to us. At 40, which is now a higher temperature. So remember what we know about ideal gases versus real gases is that um, ideal gases, they kind of respect the gas laws and stuff. So meaning they occupy as small a volume as possible, that it is almost insignificant. And therefore it's easy to predict what is going to happen. But at higher temperatures, what happens is these gases start to occupy a significant amount of volume such that you cannot ignore that so high pressures and high temperatures the real gases deviate from the ideal gas uh, model so it tells us that look we're supposed to have 22,5 so I, I, I'm convinced I'm correct sometimes a bit of conviction is what you need okay but you only convince yourself by remembering some uh, theoretical thing is Okay, so here they're just giving two marks, so I think they are not going to be. So ov obviously this proves that real gases technically deviate from ideal gas models at high temperatures than standard conditions, okay? 
Great. Um, let's keep moving. We're doing great. Um, so we have two marks here. So this question was a bit cool. It was a bit coolish. I don't go blurry, man. Now it says the graph below represents the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve for carbon dioxide at 40 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that is the story. It's a pity they didn't tell us where is the activation energy for this reaction to take place. But usually it's something that is put here. I don't know if I should consider it. Let's just say um, usually it's put on the side like this. If you remember from the November 2021 paper, they even put EA. Let's just imagine that would be the EA here which is the minimum energy required for the reaction to take place. But remember, when they didn't put it, don't throw things that you're not put. So I'm just going to, to be silly and do stuff because I can, but you must not do. All right, um, so what are they saying there? Redraw the graph above in the answer book. Okay, fine. I'm not going to redraw it. It's already here. Clearly label the curve A, so it's already labeled for me. Then it says on the same set of axes, sketch the curve that will be obtained for the carbon dioxide gas at a lower temperature. Remember at a lower temperature, remember what, what, it, what does this represent? This represents the maximum kinetic energy of the molecules, right? Sorry, the average, not maximum the average kinetic energy of the molecules because this tells you about the total number of the molecules that you have and the average kinetic energy is here okay and maybe if we're to consider the activation energy here we know that okay ah that is the story so let's get another color before this one sabotages the whole situation now how do we draw this one so what is important here is to understand a few things. Is that at a higher temperature, the number of molecules that have a higher energy are much more than the ones that do not have. But at a lower temperature, more molecules have a very small average kinetic energy compared to at a higher temperature. So the peak for a lower temperature is going to be of a lower kinetic energy. So let's just imagine our peak is going to be around this part here. I'm just going to draw my peak here and say it's going to be somewhere here. Of course, I mean, you don't really have to be accurate. As long as you have an idea of what you're doing, it's much more important. So all I know is um, here, I'm going to draw this. Here, I will have more molecules. They will start, of course, from the same. Uh -huh. So at some point, I will have more molecules here with a low average kinetic energy. Uh, I don't know if it is going to be visible, but the idea is this one should be below the other one, all right? So I think my stuff is not bad so then we can draw a nice solid line I mean don't aim for too much accuracy but make sure the message is sent that's what matters so that is going to be our where is this thing where's my question paper now oh I'm working on it goodness this is B alright of course don't draw these lines, I'm just using them to explain what we are dealing with here, okay? So basically, how do you interpret this? You can see here that the average kinetic energy is much higher here for most of the molecules, right? Than it is here. The area under the curve already tells you the uh, what does the area under the cap tell us when we're dealing with this situation? Ay, 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 ay. 
Wana yengo rente zia shuba. Ah. Ah. Can I know what does this represent? The area under the curve. Whew. Does it really matter anyway? I actually don't think it matters. Uh, I don't think it matters, but I think actually, um, I think actually this thing represents the total number of molecules anyway, the area under the cap. So let's have a look here. What does it tell you? Is that the area under the cap, look at this uh, pink one, you see? The area under the curve, you can tell that there is more molecules with not enough energy for the reaction to be taking place. And the average kinetic energy is even low, okay? Because you're reading it here, so it's low. But for this one, you can tell that the average kinetic energy is much greater than this one. And you can tell that if we were to consider the activation energy to be at this point here, you can already tell that there is more molecules for this higher temperature of molecules that have an energy that um, if you can consider this kind of a situation over here you see if you consider that portion you will notice that there is more molecules for kev a that have enough energy for the reaction to take place but here there's less you see so I wish this was included, but in any case, this curve still is better because it tells you that there's more here f with the energy that is less than enough for the reaction to take place or rather expresses that the peak gives you the average kinetic energy of the molecules. It's lower than this one here. I think maybe this graph was just on that basis rather than the influence of the activation energy okay so this is what you would get your two marks and then you say thank you and then you smile with your 18 marks if all has gone well like i said please double check these once those memos come out or use whatever materials you've got to bounce against them what you see here in case i'm wrong you please be kind to let me know so that i can myself correct any errors I may have presented all right so I hope you guys liked that one very nice question I've never seen that question on the reaction rates being that cool so it's a very cool question okay question six says uh, start or oh, don't do that initially uh, four moles of hydrogen gas and four moles of iodide gas are allowed to react in a sealed two decimeter cubed container so we have a volume and we have the amounts of these gases that acted and as you can see one mole of each acted that's why four moles reacted with four moles okay so it is according to this balanced equation and we know very well that once delta h is uh, less than zero it tells us that remember this delta H is always for the forward reaction unless otherwise stated so once we know that the forward reaction the reactants have a lower energy than sorry the product um, has lower energy than the reactants which is the case that we in, in any case expect okay so um, what this means is the forward reaction is exothermic so it really it liberates heat okay so there is heat here if you just imagine it just put a triangle there as a, a third i mean a second product that when this happens there's a production of heat and usually these are spontaneous reactions the graph below shows the concentrations of um, hydrogen gas and I hydrogen iodide gas versus uh, time during the reaction okay we can see here of course hydrogen iodide here is when at the beginning there's none and there's more of the hydrogen gas so they forgot about the iodine i mean the iodide gas so as the reaction proceeded you could tell that um we were forming more of the products in this first part 
but once we got here these ones became parallel and that means this is equilibrium right here okay we reached equilibrium and that is from t1 to t2 but at t2 some disturbance got introduced and it shifted things more and we can tell that we produced more of the product and we consumed more of the reactants but again if you imagine around this point over here again these lines are parallel so this is the new equilibrium okay so again it reaches equilibrium and as you know Lesha Tila will say if you introduce an a disturbance there's a shift so as to establish a new equilibrium okay the intention is to be at equilibrium okay not a problem so it says here write down the value of y so what is this concentration so what is concentration is amount over volume so what was the amount of hydrogen gas that was used it was four moles divide by the volume in decimeter cubed uh, cubed uh, which is two decimeter cubed so basically there it's going to be four divided by two which is going to be two mole per decimeter cubed okay so that is just your one mark and you go don't need to really cause yourself any problems um, so that is the story right there so um, it says state Le Chatelier's principle I mean I have been waiting for this question for years okay let, let, let me not say for years but I have not seen this question in the few recent papers I've seen um, this used to be famous thingy so you know what Le Chatelier's principle says right if it, it says if a system in equilibrium sorry uh, what can we say if chemical reactions or a chemical reaction in an isolated system is at equilibrium and a disturbance is introduced into the system um, the system will shift so as to cancel the effect of that disturbance so I mean you can put it in your own words if you have an understanding of what's going on <coughs> you don't really have to write exactly what is in the book I mean you need to be confident right right yeah so answering question six I'm wondering now why am I seeing 5.2 so we have 6.1 <coughs> 6.1.1 so we said here we're going to write y is equal to 2 because they said write down they didn't say calculate so 2 mole per decimeter cubed then we walk away with our one mark 6.1.2 it's a stately chatelier's principle we can just say uh, what can I say now? I'm just trying to find some fancy words, you know, to say. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, uh, okay, let's just say when an isolated chemical system is in equilibrium that is balance when an isolated system sorry when let's just say when a disturbance instead when a let's just make up for here when a disturbance okay when a disturbance is introduced to okay yeah can you believe a whole sentence was missing when a disturbance is introduced to an isolated chemical system in equilibrium the equilibrium the equilibrium will shift 
such that it cancels the effect of that disturbance meaning you are going to achieve a new equilibrium okay so i mean this is the essence of lichotilla's principle i'm not going to say too much there are two marks again easy stuff that you just need to make sure you don't lose 6.1.3 uh, it says now changes were made to the temperature of the flask at time t2 okay uh, there it is and it says a temperature change all right so not a problem it says now um, was the flask heated or cooled now the question is what is the effect of heating or cooling we know that the forward reaction is exothermic so what favors the forward reaction is a loss of that heat so when you cool this system you are going to cause the system to lose this heat here and that means the system will shift so as to retain that heat right so meaning the forward reaction will be favored and if you're favoring the forward reaction you're going to form more products so what is going on in here we can see that the hydrogen iodide curve here increased to show that we formed more products here a temperature change here favored the forward reaction so if you're favoring the exothermic reaction that means you cooled the system so the system was cooled otherwise if you heated it you would be favoring the endothermic reaction which is now the reverse reaction and that is not the case we lost these reactants even more than we lost them initially okay so it was cold so fully explain the answer in question 6.1.3 uh, again you're going to just apply now this is remember you stated Le Chatelier's principle now you're going to apply it here as your explanation okay 6.1.3 we said system was cold let's just write cold because they said just write heated or cooled so that is the one one mark um, so 6.1.4 when it says fully explain uh, your observation there or your answer all we can say um, their temperature change uh, favored their forward reaction as there were more products formed than reactants okay um, so we can say therefore uh, the forward reaction was favored as would be predicted by application of Le Chatelier's principle i don't know i mean how you phrase these things is not really the big deal as long as you recognize the man as your evidence for what you're saying so i can say the forward reaction was favored um the forward reaction was favored so as to increase the temperature right as would be predicted by Le Chatelier's principle i don't think you have to sing a lot there I mean you can align this properly as bullet forms which is much better but again you can just write a small passage but make sure you capture all that is important I don't know if it is enough but I think you get the idea so you can walk away with the three marks or anything close to three at least 
All right. Um, we're not going to say too much. Um, we just keep moving. So it says now 6.2. So we're in a new situation. So let's just get rid of this one. Um, so let's see what is the story. Is so. Um, says now the equation below represents the reversible reaction that takes place of course once you hear this word you know you're talking about an equilibrium essentially of course roughly so but reversible doesn't really necessarily mean you are at equilibrium but you have a potential to reach equilibrium right so that takes place when a nitrogen dioxide gas is converted to dinitrogen tetroxide okay we know that this guy is brown right if you've done this experiment at school this is brown this is light brown so I would play with the pressure on a syringe to see these actual changes taking place so hope you guys were that privileged to see these at least anyway we're not there let's answer the question so we can see that two molecules of nitrogen dioxide gas produce one molecule of dinitrogen tetroxide gas all right, uh, it says now initially X moles of nitrogen dioxide gas is sealed in a container. All right, and this container is of what volume? Again, pay attention to volume when you're dealing with equilibrium, especially KC calculations. You need to remember the volume. And if it is not given in decimeter cubed, convert it to decimeter cubed. Now it says um, at 350 kelvins all right it's fine I don't really care what that is when the equilibrium is established at this temperature we found out that 0 0.81 moles of dinitrogen tetroxide gas is present in the container so this is now the amount at equilibrium okay so at equilibrium this is what we have but we started with zero of course this one was x moles so we don't know how many moles there are at equilibrium okay it says now write down the meaning of the term reversible reaction again very easy question over there that nobody should get wrong at least so 6.2 so we have 6.2.1 okay so what does it say a reversible reaction A reversible reaction is what? What do we know about that story? Reversible reaction is a reaction that um, proceeds both in the forward and reverse directions, right? It's a reaction that proceeds both in the forward and a reverse don't write end like that though reverse a re direction sorry all right so that is the story i mean as long as you have forward and reverse at the same time simultaneously you've sorted it no need to i mean complicate things don't try to quote the book as it is okay but capture what is implied in that book 6.2.2 so what do they say here they are saying now show that the equilibrium constant for this uh, reaction is given by 8,01 sorry 0, 0,81 divided by x minus 6,62 I mean they are really leading you here they should have said express in terms of x so that you can sweat a little bit but it's fine they decided to simplify your life so to do this uh, situation we need to start by saying two molecules of nitrogen dioxide gas goes forward and backward to give us one molecule of dinitrogen tetroxide gas okay now remember you always have the start amount which is number of moles right the start amount here they said it's x 
and of course at the beginning there shouldn't be anything isn't it standard so here you can use this word used and or produced some people use a change they call it ice initial change and equilibrium so it's fine gotten used to my old school stuff so some things gotten simplified along the way but anyway maybe they were simplified even at that time but I didn't know anyway so what do we know here we we'll just skip this one for a second and come to equilibrium so at equilibrium what do we have here for this dinitrogen tetroxide they told us that we have 0 0,18 moles okay so not a problem now that means there's no other way we are adding this side so we just added this number to 0 so that means what we produced was 0 0,18 moles alright not a problem so now we have to work back if we produced this much we produced this much from what from two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas so if we have this how much how many moles of that so that means we needed two to get this so we just simply multiply this one by two so it's 0 0,18 times two I win a man eight one man what is going on now? Ay, ay, ay. I don't like what is happening. Ish, born with the Zellum Sevens of Snacks, Ganja. This is 0, 0,81, man. I do four still have a fit gag. This is 81. So, we have 0, 0,81 times 2. So, please, guys, pay attention when you're doing these things, they will hurt you when you already know what to do sometimes then now here we know that if we started with this we used up this much what is at equilibrium is what is left over so it's going to be x minus 1,62 moles okay right now we want concentrations right concentrations at equilibrium of course concentration is number of moles which is x minus 1,62 moles over the volume which was just one decimeter cubed which is essentially x minus 1,62 mole per decimeter cubed okay then here it's going to be 0, 0,18 divided by 1 which is 0, 0,18 moles per decimeter cubed great I'm writing this 0, 0,18 again I wonder why what is this thing trying to do? Helic. Uh huh. Okay, that is the one. We corrected it again. So, now remember KC. This C stands for concentrations. So that's why we take the trouble to do all of these we can't just use the number of moles but molar concentrations so this essentially subscript denotes molar concentrations at equilibrium okay so kc is the concentration of their products it's a quotient of the concentrations of the products at equilibrium though uh, to uh, divide by the concentrations of the reactants but the coefficient goes to the square okay so what was that so the concentration there was zero comma I win a man hey because I am is only in a little it don't take as well hello so this is x minus one comma six two mole per decimeter cube but this is squared because we can see that the coefficient must be squared and guess what this is what they said we must show so they said show that this is the case and we have so ah, the answer is already there I don't know maybe you can get a mark here uh, 
I think this is significant and this is significant so one two three again this is very important for yeah uh, I know man let's just give you a mark for everything so wherever these five marks are sometimes it's very difficult to pinpoint depending on the approach of course some approaches reveal what you have done so we've done it next question says um, 0 0.79 moles of dinitrogen tetroxide gas is now added to the equilibrium mixture above now once we add what did we say Lisha Tilia said the shift is going to be so as to cancel that addition so we're going to f sorry we're going to favor the reverse reaction then we're going to start to see more reactants being formed in this case because the equation doesn't switch it remains the same okay but we're going to form more products now and try to decrease the amount of the uh, sorry we're going to form more reactants and decrease the amount of products it says now when the new equilibrium is established at remember what 350 350 so same temperature what do you know about kc kc remains the same it is the same for any temperature but it may be more products less dontoni organi less dontonis and more prod and more product whatever it is but as for the same temperature we will have the same value of kc those ratio is good that ratio is going to remain the same so that is the key here it is found that the amount of uh, nitrogen dioxide gas has increased by 1,2 moles so that means we formed 1,2 moles after we've made this addition now this introduces us into another situation where we need to first again we're going to do this for the second time you see they are just trying to really stall your movement here they're saying hold on sir you're too quick you're moving too fast so they really are trying to stop you in your tracks on this one um, so I'll be always ready to to do this so again we're going to start um, we have um, this is six point what this is six point two point three we'll start here with nitrogen dioxide gas of course two molecules there going forward going backward to just dinitrogen tetroxide gas okay um, now what is the story now remember this introduces us into a new equilibrium situation now first the initial this time amount number of moles here it is going to be what was at equilibrium the last time around so what was at equilibrium the last time around was x minus 1.62 moles okay and what was at equilibrium here the number of moles remember we got, you just want to use the number of moles rather than the concentrations but you can use the concentrations because they're essentially the molar concentration sometimes it's easier but be careful at times they don't work so well uh, what was here was 0 0.18 uh, I'm doing this again. Can't you go again up? Da bambele la gulo one eight dim tata piba. Hey, palobo pan. Kik ngola bot ya wajual heaven. Shamu kitsubil. Impa kitsubile i. Kesa hopol. Hey, heaven. Kima tat. Shalo hilo eta lamon. Rile raya gates. Zero comma seven nine added 0 0.79 moles so this is going to be our new starting point so these are some of the key areas that you need to make sure you address and then of course we're going to talk about used or produced again I said you can use change all right and then we're going to say now at equilibrium 
Then we talk about equilibrium concentrations. Right, no problem. So, we were told that this situation here, we found out that at equilibrium, this has increased by what? By 1,2 moles. So, if this has increased by that from here, that means what we produced here was 1,2 moles. All right. So that we can say this increment, we just simply add this 1,2 to that one. So this is going to be x minus, and then these two are numbers, so these are like terms. 1,62, mm, okay, we're going to say minus 1,62 plus 1,2. Uh, I'm getting 0,42. So this is what I'm going to end up with because this is an increment now, okay, by that. And if this is what happened, that means I know for a fact that this guy, one mole, produces two moles of that. So now to know how much of this situation I used, it means I'm going to divide this by two. So one comma two divided by two is zero comma six. So that means we only used up 0 0,6 moles of this total here. Okay, maybe let's write it nicely. What was that total? 0 0,81 plus 0 0,79. This is 1,6 moles. Okay. All right. Um, now, if we're losing this from 1,6, what are we going to have at equilibrium? We're going to have 1,6 minus 0, 0,6. We have 1. 1 mole. All right, now we are ready to do our molar concentrations. So this is going to be this one. x minus 0, 0,42 over 1, which is just x minus 0, 0,42. Um, Okay, this is mole now per decimeter cubed. Here, we're going to have one mole over one, which is just one mole per decimeter cubed. All right, this is great, isn't it? Yeah, boko, go. Yeah, boko, go. Yeah, boko, go. So, now we are ready to do this again. I, I can imagine how much time you guys would lose here. So we know that Kc here is going to be equal to... Remember now, this is for the same temperature. So Kc is the same. So the previous Kc, I'm just going to write it here. This was uh, 0, 0,81 over x minus 1,62 squared. This implies that in this situation, I'm just going to try to derive simultaneous equations without really stressing myself here. So this one is 1 over, because remember, products over reactor. So this is 1 over this situation here. This is x minus 0, 0,42 squared equals 0, 0,81 over x minus 1,62 squared. So this is what we have. So what are we going to do here? Cross multiply. This essentially just becomes x minus 1,62 squared equals 0, 0,81 into x minus 0, 0,42 squared. All right, so Let's just see what can we do. This simply says we have here x squared uh, minus, I'm going to say 1,62 by 2. 1,62 by 2. I get 3,24x plus uh, 
one comma six two. Okay, let's just put it in brackets. One comma six two squared. This becomes two comma six two four four. Okay. So I mean, this is just designed to trouble you. I'm sorry, guys, but this is just how it is. So this is going to be x squared minus uh, this one by two zero comma four two times two. This is zero comma eight four plus. Um, let's do this one zero comma four two squared. This is zero comma one seven six four. Okay. Yeah, I in x squared minus three comma two four x plus two comma six two four four. This, if you don't maintain your focus, I promise you, you are going to find yourself where you really don't want to be minus. And then zero comma eight four times zero comma eight one. Okay. Uh, what do we get there? We get minus zero comma six eight oh four. Remember there was x there, so I'm making a mistake already. X and then zero comma eight one times zero comma one seven six four. Yikes. This is plus zero comma one four two eight eight four. I get fiwala. So now this is smaller than that, so we can do this guy and this guy, what are they going to give me? 1 minus 0, 0,81 is 0, 0,19x squared. Then we are going to handle this as well. So when you bring in this guy to that side, we're going to have minus 3,24 plus 0, 0,6804. So I get minus 2,5596x. So this is when this and that fight. Then this one comes over to that side as well. We have 2,6244 minus 0, 0,142884. So I get plus 2,4815,16 equals 0. I mean, there's no way you can think about factors in this case. It's just going to be horrible. So the best thing here is to solve for x in this manner. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So mathematics is your friend when you get to these stages. You know what, I found myself doing this when I was calculating some money situations in the bank, so, and I couldn't make, I couldn't make any understanding of what was happening until I realized quadratic and I got the money. Hmm. All right, so this is minus into minus 2,5596 plus or minus the square root of the same thing minus two comma five five nine six squared minus four into eight zero comma one nine um, into c which is two comma four eight um, one five six yeah ne? I guess we were born in 2011. Ah, but one of all one, I can't wait. Hey, in Babari, a very one. The fell and that. All right, her bonnie, hey, Asian twin, I feel like a mad Two minus two, comma, two, I mean, comma, five, five, nine, six. 
Uh, let's start with the plus the square root <coughs> minus two comma five five uh, nine six squared minus four into zero comma one nine. Ah, gold rates are when gold rates dwelling had a lot. The apple I am and that five six zero comma one nine. In fact, I'm not even going to try this time around. Please don't give me an error of weight. Thank you, Lord. Hey. But like a shwa. Um, <clears throat> so, hey, but this doesn't make sense, does it? Hey, this number of moles 12, you honky. This is a 1,6 car. Hey, and if I got like a leon in down. Anyway, so we know that our x, of course, it can't be negative, so we're going to choose the positive one. So this is 12, comma. For two moles, because that was the number of moles. Hi. Yeah. Don't cry, guys. I didn't choose this question to be asked, but they asked it anyway. Let's try and establish if this is really working. If it doesn't work, then I. Diegeni. Diegeni. Um, let's see. Uh, why did I remove this thing anyway? Should have checked if the, the positive one is going, the negative one is going to give us a negative now. Uh, 25596 uh, five, minus the square root minus 2,55. Nine six squared minus four into zero comma one nine into two comma four eight one five six uh, two into zero comma one nine um hey when I born at <laughs> Here, I was quick to run for this one. So, O, X is 1,052, which is essentially 1,05 moles. So, you see the negative one also gives us the answer. But now, which one do you think is realistic here? Ah, yo, I, I need the again for it. Yo, I and us, I need the again for it. Thank God they didn't try to say apply this. So I, one of them, I think, must be correct, and I'm not even going to check, guys. So, if this is correct, six marks in the bag. <laughs> If it is wrong, I'm sorry guys, I tried, okay? Great. So it's already too long. I don't think we need to kill ourselves over this. Um, but I think our procedure and processing is proper. Yes, some digits may have been mishandled over there, which is possible when you have a complicated situation like this, but um, just leave it alone. Um, you know what some people what some people do they look at how small a particular number is in that denominator and then they just ignore it I don't know if it is safe to ignore these ones and then start focusing on the rest and see if you're getting an answer but usually it gives you an answer that is close if that is very small but let's not go there we don't know what's going on but I think if ever I was to choose Maybe this one is much closer. This one is too too great. Yes, it's still possible to be uh, uh, at play there, so, but it means too big. I think this is much more realistic, given the concentrations that we have. 
Uh, so I would assume that probably that's what we would have, okay? Um, let's see if we compare this with the previous thing that we did. So we said here we used up this much to get this much, okay? Um, so this was 1,62. Already this is small. So it means or indeed this cannot be correct because what we used was already more than what we have. So I don't know if I'm wrong about my calculations but in any case this one becomes invalid because we can't use more than we started with, isn't it? And yet we have something remaining. So yeah, this one is out. So sometimes a little bit of a small onion a check will start to solve your issue. So I, I think now we are happy that this should be the answer, as crazy as it looks. Okay, anyway, not a problem. So let's just move on before we tell ourselves a little bit of time we have. Okay, no problem. Just want to end this thing now. Yo, it's too long, but let's just hold on, guys. Just bear with me for a second. I hope, I promise you, this is gonna be the last video of me doing this question after question at once. So, probably break up into individual questions now, just to make it easy for the viewer so that we don't really chow your time so much. Uh, question 7 says, uh, start uh, on a new page, okay? Now it says two acids, H, X, and H, Y, of equal concentrations are compared, okay? Um, not a problem. Yeah, problem, not a problem. Um, Mag, I need to drink <laughs> some water. I won't take long, guys. I'm sorry. I'll be quick. Okay, um, there, is, there is something in that's not the correct thing, but right here. Something, something is fishy. I don't know why it is fishy. I don't want fishy stuff here. No fishness. No fishes are allowed. All right. Ingo sikona. Ingo sina. Ah, 
standing in my way all right okay let's do this one so it says two acids hx and hy of equal concentrations are compared okay the ph of hx is 2,7 and the ph of hy is 0, 0,7 so of course the lower the ph the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions formed so obviously you can tell this is stronger than this guy. It says now define an acid in terms of lowry bronsted theory. So lowry bronsted theory says an acid is a proton donor. Okay, it's a proton donor. You don't want to complicate your life here. You get your two marks and you leave. But according to Arrhenius, he says, is it Arrhenius? Arrhenius. Um, says an acid is a substance that liberates hydrogen ions in solution okay which acid hx or hy is stronger give a reason for your answer so we decided it was hy right the answer is hy because of the low ph which translates to a higher concentration of the oxonium ions is it H3O? Yeah, ne? I don't know what I'm writing. So, that is the story over there. So, basically, you don't want to say too much. Low pH means a higher concentration of the oxonium ions. Or you call them hydronium ions. Okay. That's it. Two marks in the bag. Now it says HX ionizes in water. HX ionizes in water in this manner so we have this one mole of hx solution produces one mole of aqueous solution i mean of hydro hydronium ions and that conjugate base water becomes a base here because it accepts the hydrogen to form the oxonium ions and that one loses it and then it forms that uh, radical now we are told the ionization constant of this reaction is 1,8. Basically, this is as good as the Kc, okay? But when we're talking acids and bases, because this is in relation to its ions in solution. <coughs> Sorry, that's what we're going to call the ionization constant, okay? Now look at this constant. It's very small, okay? It's very small. Um, ideally, let's think about it, can't you? What is the range of EKC? You know, some things like to interfere with my life, man, and I'm not happy with that. Uh, let's see. What is the value of... Uh, what KC value is... Uh, Let's think, I think it's something to 1,000, but I'm not too sure. What is the lower limit, man? But it's a range that goes to 1,000. And what is it? 0, 0,2. Ish, 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 ish. Or is it 0, 0,5? Man, I'm not too sure, but let's just say 0, 0,5. But I'm not too sure if I'm not pushing my luck. There is it 0, 0,05 or 0, 0,0? Ah, oh, my lord. Come on now. Let me just check if I don't have something close by that can remind me of this thing. Because I don't understand. Why my memory is all of a sudden inadequate? Young man does it ail. Send Kalani in the Bani memory in Fushani Ganji in a match. Because I wanted to know these cutoffs properly. Goodness, yeah. Let's just um, <clears throat> work with what we have here. But I think this range is, is like this, eh? 
I'm quite confident but maybe this is 0 0.02 or so maybe 0 0.5 is quite big as well it's within range <sighs> whatever man let's just leave it for now but basically what this thing is doing it's saying what we have here we have 0 comma we have 5 here so it's going to be 0 comma 0 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 and then it says 1 8 wait 1 2 3 4 5 so we pushed out like how many 1 2 3 4 5 I think it's something like that God yeah something like that at times ge I ignored about where to village is katale and it says news into but maybe it's too much one two three four maybe it's going to be four like this yeah one eight so that if you push this you push this one's one two three four you push one two three four yeah there's an extra zero there yeah Ah, whatever but as you can see that there's just too many zeros before the number that's just that scientific notation dictates to us so at 25 degrees Celsius again okay so it says now is the concentration of the hydronium ions higher than lower than or equal to the concentration of HX give a reason for your answer Ah, uh, so basically if you're looking at the ionization constant is very small so it means it lies far to the left okay so that means this ionizes partially that means the hydronium concentration is going to be smaller than the actual concentration of the acid okay so the answer is lower than what is the concentration of the hydronium ions higher yeah it's lower than because of the small ionization constant like I said the range is some but just double check the lower limit I'm not too sure anymore but I'm very certain that a thousand and more is good but the good range should be between here okay so um, that is the story so it's going to be lower than now give a reason for your answer we can just simply say that um, the HX ionizes partially due to a very low ionization constant okay the ka value okay great don't need to complicate anything there you get your two marks and you smile so that is the story so here you just need to know how to tell what is what here okay great so now it says Lenners added 150 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide solution NaOH of unknown concentration okay the concentration is unknown and uh, to 200 centimeter cubed of 0 0.03 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid solution as illustrated below so you can see there is the hydrochloric acid solution and they are adding that volume of sodium hydroxide of an unknown concentration okay great now it says they find that the pH of the final solution is 2 again what is that pH it's below 7 way below 7 so this is acidic so what does it tell you the acid is in excess okay some of these things is just a matter of you know understanding the dynamics that are going on so if the acid is in excess at the end it means we're neutralizing this one completely such that the final because if these ones were equal and they neutralized each other completely this, which means the reaction reached its final stage or final end or whatever it would mean that the pH should be neutral isn't it because the salt that they form is actually neutral but now once we have an acidic final solution it tells us that we still have extra hydrogen ions there and that means the acid must have been in excess for this to be acidic okay 
Okay, so now it says the balanced equation for the reaction is, so again they make our lives easy. So one mole of hydrogen, I mean of hydrochloric acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide and so forth. So it says now calculate the concentration of the oxonium ions or hydronium ions in the final solution. Final solution's pH is 2. So we're going to use the pH to do that because we know that great uh, question 7. So we're doing 7.2. Um, so here's what we have HCl plus NaOH going to NaCl plus that. So we know that when strong base reacts with an acid we get sodium and water okay so this is solutions this is liquid okay great now what are we having here well we're going to start 7.2.1 we're going to answer it in this manner we know that pH is given by uh, minus the log of the concentration of the oxonium ions. Okay, great. No problems about it. So what is the pH of the final solution? They said it's 2. Equals um, minus log of what we don't know. Okay, great. Now, you know that you're going to just use logs here. So your mathematical gymnasia is at play again oh god so this is 2 equals then you exponent multiplies in front so it's going to be log you just convert this uh, it's going to be 1 over I mean when you remember this is going to be to the minus 1 and then you convert to a positive so I'm just moving fast guys sorry if I'm too quick or oh, I'm probably even slower than you like it so in any case now we have this number right here so we convert to exponents. So the base is 10 when it's not indicated. It's always assumed as such. So you just convert to exponents. This implies that the base pushes that number to the exponent. So we now have a power of 10, base 10 to exponent 2. Then we drop the log here. It's going to be equal to this number here, which is there. Reciprocal of the concentration of our ozonium ions. Now this is over 1. So what do we want? Cross multiplication. So all mathematical, you know, tricks you must use here. So when you multiply there, you will simply have to divide by that to eventually isolate that one. So this implies that our ozonium ion concentration is going to be 1 over 10 to the exponent 2. So, let us finally deal with this situation. Therefore, our oxonium ion concentration in our final solution, that's what determines the pH, is going to be 1 divided by 10 squared, which is 0 0,01 mole per decimeter cubed. That's the answer. Okay, great. Easy question that you're already familiar with. So that and uh, some substitution here and the answer because I mean we're not interested in your mathematical skills. We're interested in their application. All right. Uh, so seven comma two comma two. What do they want? says now the initial concentration of sodium hydroxide here seven marks you know there you're going to sweat okay but for it we can handle this um, we can do it we can do it let me look for a nice colored pen I don't know where are my pencils. It's last year we learned to say, okay, let's send for these eyes. Why it's...
Yamte na joa. Re shabe he ba na be so ereke ngole hap esh ake ba atli hello ngole anto zengata. Na koli na ko wa wan. Wani itu saka ingin tuin. Aum aum na mo itu sandi. Ya wan hai ngole li han se joa. Esh 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 esh. Where's my other pen card? Kati wen zeget to nila. I have things decided to run from me. Why? Where is my phone card? Above. Even you pay attention. It's a why. Okay. That's why. Can this end just sell one image? HCL. You were sick, I shall have fed you. Lily, man. All right, I'm not going to care about their state in this thing now. I'm just interested in what I'm supposed to do. So basically, let's think about this acid. What was the volume of this acid initially? The volume was at the acid, what is 200? So this is 200 centimeter cubed, which when we convert, remember we can't deal with this one. We're dealing with molar concentrations and the SI unit is moles per decimeter cubed. So we're going to have to divide that by 1000. So you should already know how to do that conversion. I'm not going to explain it, okay? This is 0 0,2 decimeter cubed. Uh, that is VA, V acid. What about concentration of acid? They gave us that it is um, 0, 0,03 mole per decimeter cubed. See, this is nice now because these units are almost proper. Okay, so what does this tell us? It tells us that the number of moles of the acid that we started with is going to be concentration multiplied by volume, which is uh, 0, 0,03 multiplied by 0, 0,2. Um, I'm getting 6 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Why am I doing all of this? Because I know what I want to arrive at. So this is the number of moles that I had initially. But what was the number of moles that I ended up with? Because this is what was left, isn't it? Because one mole of hydronium ions is produced from one mole of the hydrochloric acid. So in essence, this number of moles here will essentially give me the number of moles of the acid. So now let's find out what is the number of moles that we got here. But remember the volume now was the added volume sort of so let's take another color this is a bit extensive i tell you um let's see there this was the initial right this thing is hard but fit um now the number of moles left <laughs> so we can say number of moles of acid that remained i don't know i'll say left is equal to the number of moles of the oxonium ions in the solution, right? Which is going to be the concentration multiplied by volume, which is going to be 0, 0,01 multiplied by. Now remember the volume here is the total of that 150 plus the 200 centimeter cubed. So here we're going to essentially have here 150 plus 200. I'm just showing you though. Divide by 1000 so that you can understand what is happening here. Otherwise, uh, you can summarize this. So let's see 150 plus 200 gives me 350 divided by 8000. I get 0, 0,35.
So let's see is this zero comma three five multiplied by zero comma zero one. Get three comma five times ten to the minus three moles. Okay. Now this is very small, right? Because if you realize what this is, this is zero comma zero zero three. Ne? Zero comma zero zero three five okay and this one is zero comma zero zero six okay so you can almost tell that this is bigger than that isn't it okay so this is a bit of a situation buffet you um let's see what are we doing now now I want to know how many moles were used of the acid. So we can say number of moles of acid used is going to be what was there initially. Because the number of moles doesn't change. Concentration can change depending on the volume. But the number of moles will just remain the same. In a higher volume the concentration is lower for the same number of moles. Um, and then uh, what is the other story? It can be higher for a smaller volume with the same number of moles. So number of moles used here of the acid is going to be uh, what was started with which is 0 comma let's just write it as it is 6 times 10 to the 3 minus 3 comma 5 times 10 to the 3 Okay, so basically this is just 6 minus 3 comma 5. Okay. Okay, so this becomes 2 comma 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, moles. So this is the number of moles that reacted or used. You can say used or reacted of the acid. So this question is like a back forth kind of a situation. Okay. All right. All right. So we're good. And then um, now, what do we want? Now that we know how many moles were used, because we can tell here that the pH told us the acid is in excess. That is why we wanted to find out how much of the acid did we use up, because we know that one mole of acid reacted with one mole of base. Okay? Right? Now. We want to find out what is this concentration because we gobbled it all up. So we can say therefore the number of moles of base which is sodium hydroxide is going to be um, this number of moles that we used is going to be 2,5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. All right. So now that we have the number of moles we knew that the volume of the base was 150 centimeter cubed which when we divide it's 150 divide by 1 decent is 0 comma 15 decimeter cubed of course the concentration was the question mark now what do we want here now that we know the number of moles of the base that are actually taken up because we know one mole is to one mole so this follows that the concentration is always number of moles over volume. It doesn't matter that the volume can change, but the initial is going to be based on this. But the total, I mean, in this reaction, the concentration dropped because the volume increased, but the number of moles will never change. The amount is the same. So this tells us that the concentration of NaOH initially, okay, is going to be equal to the number of moles divided by the volume 
Number of moles is 2,5 times 10 to the minus 3. Divide by the volume is 0, 0,15. Um, let's see, 2,5 to the minus 3. Divide by 0, 0,15. So I get something like 0, 0, I mean to two decimal places we can say 2 mole per decimeter cubed, just to keep it simple, round it off. At the end it's easier to do that, but you don't want to do it in the intermediate steps. Just leave out as many decimals as you can so that you don't get an answer that is far away from what is expected. So we've answered the question because they wanted the initial concentration of sodium hydroxide. So do you see we had to work a lot with the acid, then eventually make this link here, that one mole of acid reacted with one mole of the base, and then this concludes that the number of moles of the acid reacted are the same as the number of moles of the base that reacted, and we know that this base was exhausted. So. This is the total number of moles that were present in that base. Then we can determine the concentration based on its initial volume, not the total volume. Because the total volume really, the concentration was smaller, but I mean, that's not really useful at this point. Uh, it's useful when you want the pH of the final solution. Great, so seven marks in the back, guys. I'm not even going to try and find out where they are. So this, in essence, takes us into a good mood indeed because we finished our 16 marks of this question and we say thank you very much uh, of course there are plenty of methods that you can apply but i always choose the number of moles it works best sometimes concentrations will cause a bit of glitches but if you can use them carefully you can because these are molar concentrations as well so they can work but Number of moles will always make it easier, although it can be a long route. All right, guys. Before you kill me for chowing your time, <laughs> so let me move. Let me move. Let me move. So I feel like these questions were truly, truly, truly testing you. If if you really don't read your books very well, hmm and to also don't understand a bit, this can be a bit challenging. So this app is not easy, guys. Please just take it as that. Yes, it's not always going to be difficult, but most of the times the questions are pretty challenging. You can see here, it's taking a while to answer some of them the, the usual way, you know. So, yeah. Question 8. An electrochemical cell is set up using aluminium rod. Okay. Using the rod AL and gas X. So they're telling us that whatever this is, it's a gas. Okay. Fine. It says now the initial EMF, that is the standard electrode potential of the cell, is 2,89 volts. It says now state the standard conditions under which this cell operates. So great, I mean this one is standard grade material. Materiale 8.1. So we have 8.1.1. Let's just answer it nice and easy. So standard. Yeah, ne? Standard conditions. We know that the concentrations should be equal to one mole per decimeter cubed. Concentrations of what of electrolytes? Ah, a food. So concentration of electrolytes, I don't know what I'm trying to write here, man. Yo I can go. The concentration of electrolytes should be equal to 1 mole per decimeter cubed. The temperature should be equal to 25 degrees Celsius or 298 kelvins. If you are obsessed with the kelvins. And then the pressure should be 1 atmospheric pressure, which is 101,3 kPa. What am I writing? Kgs now. Here one. 
mfano no to be le ke o you can write um 1,013 uh what is that how do you write the atmospheric pressure let me check hmm. I think it's times 10 to the 3, right? Yeah, man. Something like that. Pascals. Isn't it? Uh -huh. This guy. This guy. This guy. He's losing the plot. Ah, the fit. He's actually to the 5. Damn. Uh, it's to the five, not three. Okay. Not a problem. Let me see if this is correct then. One comma zero uh, one comma zero one three to the five divide by eight thousand. Um yeah, it's correct. Okay. So those are the standard conditions usually. This is when gases are involved, right? But the electrolytes should be at one mole per decimeter cubed. So one, two, three. Easy marks here. Yeah. So they are trying to give you a bit of a relief from the previous torture. Especially the KC. They made it hard. Now it says use a calculation to identify gas X. Helic. Let's just have a look at the standard electrode potentials because we may be in trouble here if we're not careful. Now we're coming back here. So we're seeing aluminium. So we already identified the aluminium from the MCQs. There is this uh, standard electrode potential. It's minus 66, 1,66, sorry. And already there's no gases below aluminium. So it's all solids here mostly. Guesses it's that one. Could it be this one? Maybe. But by the mere fact that aluminium is the very bottom here because of all the guesses that we have here. The guesses is that um, hydrogen gas or that hydrogen gas. In fact, this one is the water molecule that's actually at play here. It's not necessarily the gas here. But that one is the gas, the gas. So the gases are mainly oxidizing agents if they were to act with aluminum. So we know that this becomes the reducing agent. So we know that the electrode potential of a cell equals the standard electrode potentials of the cathode, or you can say oxidation, or the oxidizing agent, uh, minus the standard electrode potential of the anode or the reducing agent I mean it's up to you what you say now they told us that what is, what is the value there oh this back and forth is killing me it's killing me man it's killing me slowly all right they said it's 2,89 so we have 2,89 equals now this cathode, we know that this X should be the cathode because there's no gas below um, the aluminum so that aluminum can function as an oxidizing agent. So if we're using table A, it dictates that aluminum be the reducing agent because it is in the stronger reducing agent section. Holy. Now we know that here, this is X. We want to identify X. So we can just say here, this is E potential of X. Okay, instead of writing cathode, minus, we got this one, anode is the aluminum in this case. So we said it's minus 1,66, okay. So it tells us that the electrode potential of compound X, or whatever gas X is, is going to be the addition of these two Oh, sorry, no, this one, it becomes positive. So when it goes to that side, it's going to be 2,89 minus 1,66 because this will make it positive. When you do your mathematical gymnastics, it gives you what? What? That one. Minus 1,66. I get 1,23, which is positive. So this is volts. 
therefore guess x is equal to oh sorry not equal to but is is let's go to our standard electric potentials and check what gas has that uh, standard electric potential so we just check of course these are negative so you want to start with the positive so we're going to start above the hydrogens let's keep going 1,07, 1,2, 1,23. This is manganese dioxide. I mean, this is a solid. It's a blackish powder. So the next one, oh yeah, that is uh, oxygen gas. Wow, it's actually oxygen getting oxidized. I mean, reduced to water. It's plus 1,23. So this should be oxygen because I said it's a gas. Is oxygen. Yes, we can just say O2 gas. Not a problem. Yeah, that is a bit of work. Actually, we are almost done, so we should not cry a lot. Yeah, I hope. So is oxygen gas. Did they say formula? No, they said identify. So you can just say oxygen gas or O2G whatever five marks yeah this one substitution answer and identifying this I think is fine for five marks greatly great great eight comma one comma three what are we going to have there they're saying write down the formula of the reducing agent in this cell what is a reducing agent it is the agent that is itself being oxidized so they said write down the formula the formula is aluminium al it's like this all right so that is just one mark no issues eight comma one comma four it says write down the half reaction that takes place at the cathode so cathode is oxidizing agent right right so we saw that uh, we saw we identified that this is this gas over here at play so we write it from left to right remember so it's going to be o2 gas you write it as it is written there don't write your own things plus uh, four ions of um, hydrogen so meaning this thing needs to be acidified okay plus four electrons don't have a backward arrow okay it, it becomes wrong 2H2O that's it that's it that's it because they said of the oxidizing agent I hope I'm answering the correct one but I'm tired of this back and forth is killing me it's killing me man okay so what is going on here it says write down the half reaction that takes place at the cathode okay which is reduction so fine we're reducing oxygen into water so that is the one okay you don't need to write it in a balanced fashion at this point when they say just write down just write it as it appears on the standard electric potentials but make sure your arrow only goes forward and make sure you write it from right to from left to right sorry great um but when you write it here of course you're gonna start from right to left but you read it in the standard electric potential from left to right okay okay so two marks not a problem it's in the bag eight comma one comma five okay it says write down the cell notation for this cell now you know the cell notation by convention you're starting with the anode okay or the reducing agent so this is aluminium you write that slanted thingy there 
it goes to aluminium three plus ions because it is itself being oxidized isn't it three plus plus three electrons no 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 you're not gonna write electrons remember this one is slanted to show this is the half cell then this one must be vertical which represents the salt bridge because they tell they told us this is an electrochemical cell and of course if it happened under standard condition it is a galvanic cell and therefore we will have a salt bridge and then here we have oxygen okay you can write gas if you want it goes into water okay not a problem so this one must be slanted as well like that okay so this is it the cell notation is fine like this so I guess for that half cell reaction and this half cell reaction wait in the salt bridge <laughs> so you get your three marks and we say thank you very much you asked us very basic questions so the last one says which container zinc or copper will be more suitable to store an aqueous solution of nickel ions nickel ions all right so it says now sorry uh, refer to the table of standard reduction potentials to fully explain the answer in terms of the relative strengths of reducing agents hmm. now is copper or zinc going to be able to reduce this thing because you want to keep it as iron so you want something that is not going to react with this one between copper and zinc let's find out if that is possible at all now let's look at nickel where is nickel nicholas where is nicholas ah uh, there is nickel is it nickel or nicholas i don't know whatever it is and I okay nickel nickel will be reduced to nickel like that so we don't want it to be reduced we want to keep it as an ionic solution like this so now look at zinc zinc is a strong reducing agent compared to nickel and nickel is a strong oxidizing agent compared to zinc so that means zinc will reduce nickel ions to nickel and that's not what we want but look at copper copper basically is a strong oxidizing agent than nickel all right meaning copper will oxidize nickel and that means it will keep it in ionic form because when you oxidize nickel you're going to force it to go this way to forming ions because copper is happy to accept electrons where is cu2 plus that one okay so see the best one is to use copper because copper already will maintain our ions as they are and again the electrons are balanced so we are happy there so we're going to choose copper we're going to choose copper container so it should be the copper container okay do i really have to explain this yeah ne? so we can say here uh, cause copper is a weaker reducing agent than nickel okay and so we'll not reduce the nickel ions okay um, do I really need to say more I don't think so because they said we must talk about the relative reducing strengths so yeah I think that is fine for choosing that to my one mark two bucks eh yeah maybe two bucks for that explanation i'm really tired i don't want to go into details again easy 18 marks i think you can go to town here if you want because you have a lot to say but maybe you're going to also 
make the argument why zinc is not the best and say not zinc because zinc is a stronger reducing agent than um, nickel and therefore we'll reduce the nickel into nickel metal all right maybe that one is another one say why zinc is not the best choice okay yeah let's just not prolong this let's just stop it there so maybe you should add zinc in your argument as to why it's not the best choice okay but you can see why it is not the best choice i don't need to really fully explain that okay question nine last question oh yes we finally got there the simplified diagram below represents the electrochemical cell okay it's an electrochemical cell again okay used for electrolysis Ooh, what a name electrolysis or electrolysis to lyse something is to split into parts so we're breaking it apart of a concentrated sodium chloride solution okay okay x and y are carbon electrodes okay no problem so already you know carbon they know it's not going to react with these things it's really relatively non-reactive so it's like graphite and stuff which is mainly carbon isn't it all right uh, let's have a look at this one now once we hear power source we know this is an electrolytic cell okay so the electrolytic cell is such that the cathode is connected to the negative terminal and the anode is connected to the positive terminal okay so that is not a problem so we can really try and hustle this thing um, now it says define the term electrolysis so what do we know about the term electrolysis okay um, let's see okay let's start on a new page and end this thing as fast as possible so question 9 9.1 What is electrolysis? Okay, electrolysis is a process. Okay, is a process where by the process whereby what? Yeah, it is a process whereby a chemical change a chemical change or reaction you can say reaction here if you like a chemical change or reaction okay in an electrolyte electrolyte okay is made with the use of an electric current all right not a problem i mean if you understand how it's made so you can just simply put it into words whichever way you choose but make sure you capture the word electrolyte though because electrolytes conduct electricity so you can't break apart other things that don't conduct electricity and then of course specify that there is a reaction or chemical change and electric current so if you capture those you get full marks so there you go 9.2 what is the story there it says chlorine gas is released at electrode x so chlorine gas is being formed here but remember this electrolyte chlorine is in ions so when this one is broken apart it breaks into sodium ions plus chlorine ions so now 
once these ions chlorine ions are made into chlorine gas because this is now Cl2 gas which is greenish so once you see a greenish gas here bubbles now you know that this is being oxidized is it it because chlorine ions get oxidized into chlorine gas I mean again if you don't remember this you have this as your guide so we are here so we know that we're moving according to the expression that we're given or the scenario we're moving from chloride ions which is a halide towards the chlorine gas which is a diatomic molecule which is called a halogen okay so we are going when we go from right to left this is oxidation half reaction so there is oxidation happening here uh, it's back and forth is killing me though so there is oxidation here so basically in this electrode we are undergoing oxidation all right so obviously if that is oxidation here we're going to have reduction and if this is reduction we know this is the cathode right and we know that if this is oxidation this is the anode all right and if this is the anode we know this is the positive terminal this is the negative terminal which is the reverse in the galvanic cell right right so chlorine gas is released at electrode x so this is just how good that piece of information assists us in understanding our diagram even further now it says write down the letter x or y um, of the electrode where oxidation takes place so it takes place in uh, electrode x because we said chlorine chloride ions get oxidized here into chlorine gas so that is oxidation from the standard electrode potentials now it says write down the half reaction that takes place at y okay the half reaction that takes place at y all right not a problem so this is sodium so we're just going to form that sodium the atom that is neutral so here what is happening at y is this this is going to be reduction so it's going to be na plus plus an electron it goes to sodium ah in its ground state okay let's have a look and see if it is indeed so now you see sodium there only takes one electron and it goes to sodium so reduction is read from left to right in the standard electrode potential so that is what we have so don't try to balance it now the half reactions don't need to be balanced okay so they are already balanced in the standard electrode potentials but when they want the net cell thingy then you have to balance so now it says the direction um, in which electrons flow in the external circuit choose from x to y or y to x so what do we know about the electron flow in an electrolytic cell so we know that the electrons in an electrolytic cell they actually flow from the negative to the positive because the positive attracts negative charges isn't it yes so um which one is the negative now here this is the negative so electrons are going to flow like that so they're going to flow from y to x so that is the answer all right so i hope we are happy Okay, great. So let's choose nice and easy. I'm just trying to not write everything to compensate. So that is your answer. So you get your one mark. No need to explain that. Just need to know it. Now it says the balanced. Now this time we have to fix what is not in balance. Now the balanced equation for the net overall cell reaction that takes place in the cell now that's a bit of work so 9.2.4 here first of all we know that the 
oxidation here have reaction uh, we have chlorine ions I mean chloride ions 2Cl minus it goes into we was reading it from right to left it goes into Cl2 that's a diatomic gas a halogen and plus two electrons that's what it releases right so we can see here that it's two electrons here but what about reduction reduction we saw that there is sodium ions accepting only one electron going to sodium so we're reading it from right to left sorry from left to right ish yeah ne? So now we need to multiply this one by 2 because we want to balance the number of electrons. So therefore our net reaction is going to be 2. So this is going to be 2,2. Two. So it's going to be 2Na plus, right, plus 2Cl minus. Okay, which goes on to be 2Na in its ground state plus chlorine gas. Okay, Cl2, sorry, what am I doing? Cl2. So this is gas, this is solid, this is Aq, this is Aq. Okay, I mean you don't need to show this one. So that is the answer. So basically you get your two marks here for this one and for that correction you had to make so the three marks you have over there all right uh, so 9.3 what is the story here it says now how will the pH of the electrolyte change during the reaction does it increase does it decrease or remains the same I will choose this guy it remains the same here okay now it says give a reason for your answer you can say the the reaction is not acidified okay so nothing will change but in acidified reactions there may be some pH change and all that so the reaction is not acidified so essentially taking place under neutral conditions I would, I would assume that so I mean so you can just say there's no um, acid or basic uh, I mean the pH of sodium chloride is neutral it's seven around seven so and these are just being taken up like that so nothing is going to really change much because when they leave this, they leave water, which is also 7 in pH. So, I mean, this is essentially neutral condition. So, no need for really detailed explanations. And then that is how you crack your 11 marks. And that's how you took your 150 marks, hopefully. Of course, hoping that we didn't do any problems there. Uh, so, guys, that is how you probably could have approached this paper during the exams for those who wrote it and this is how you approach a paper like this for those who are still to write and of course uh, even if you are hoping to write again or you are done you're going to move on and apply these further so this is essentially how it could be done of course there could be mistakes as you could see some questions were pretty extensive so it's easy to make errors so the idea is not really to get the answers anyway the idea is just to have an approach of how to really milk the direction in the questions so that you can then maximize on your carefulness to really get maximum marks all right guys i hope you liked the video and thank you very much again for your assistance and sharing and liking to making sure that many people 
may have a bit of a chance to have a look at this as well and decide also for themselves whether it is helpful or not and hoping that of course if they find it helpful they will do the same and share it and so that at least you know everyone can have a fair chance to compare and contrast from different approaches different you know awarenesses and all those things so we can't really go into details about it i hope you liked the video as well as i did and uh, good luck as well to your future endeavors for those who passed these papers and if you did not don't worry you'll do it again so you just know now how to approach it otherwise i'll see you next time which i hope it's not very long which i just believe is going to be soon and i said uh, it's going to be the last time i probably do a paper like this like you know long questions so i'll probably just drop you know bits and pieces every now and then when i find something interesting to discuss hoping that when you need a more lengthy approach you'll just approach these videos as often as you want otherwise guys good luck to those who are writing and i hope we will work together continually until the very end Shop.